All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's BISC Brief event. Topic for today is private, secure, uncensorable communication channels. Basically, basically alternative communication channels that we can start to use or continue to use or maybe use more uh, in the BISC project or in general. It's a topic that a lot of people have suggested over the years. Uh, as you probably know, BISC uses a lot, of, uh, a lot of the more commercial platforms right now, GitHub, Slack, YouTube, we're on Zoom right now. Um, there are some reasons for that we can get into later if you guys want, but um, I thought it'd be a good topic to bring up now because a couple of reasons. So the main one being that BISC launched Trader Chat, a uh, chat tool for traders this week on Monday with the launch of version 1.1.6. Uh, today I, is the first day that the, uh, that the requirement to update to version 1.1.6 was activated. So um, if you haven't updated already, please update as soon as you can. You need to in order to trade on the software from today onward. Um, so Trader Chat is, is, a, is a step toward making dispute resolution on BISC a little bit more smooth. You can actually talk directly with the peer and resolve any issues that, uh, you know, minor issues that come up that, uh, you know, chat can help with. A couple other small reasons. We recently revived our Keybase team. We've had a Keybase uh, presence for a couple of years at least, um, but it wasn't really being used. Uh, we recently revived that. And put the, I'm going to put the link in, in the chat for those of you guys who want, want to check it out. Um, also, one of the other contributors set up a Riot, a room on, on, well, on, on Matrix, using the Riot client. And the chats happening on there are being piped into Slack on the chat bridge channel. So it's something cool to play around with. The, I guess approach I want to take with this call is maybe a little bit different from what was talked about on Twitter. So I think about communication channels as being of two different varieties. There's collaboration where you have a uh, kind of ephemeral chat based medium to a captive community. So basically Slack or, um, you know, Keybase, Riot, these are tools that you, you know, if the, if the project decides to adopt them and moves over to them, everybody's going to have to adopt them. Anybody who wants to become involved with the project is going to have to use them. And I think that's largely a solved problem, so to speak. The tools are there. It just requires somebody uh, or a group of people within the project to, you know, summon up the will to move over and, and do all the legwork required, required to do that. Um, the other aspect of communications is what I think of as persistent um, outreach based uh, platforms like Twitter, like YouTube. These kinds of things are meant more for promotion and marketing and outreach to people who aren't necessarily a captive audience. Um, this I think is where the real challenge is. And this is what I really wanted to discuss a little bit more on the call. Um, as like I mentioned, there's a lot of people who've suggested over the years that we move to more uh, open platforms for, for communication and collaboration. Um, and we certainly do need to do that. We have uh, some initiatives underway for uh, moving from Slack. Um, and then, I mean, it's been talked about that we'll move from GitHub. I'm not sure how realistic that is in the short term. But um, yeah, the, the other ones, like the Twitter, for example, I don't, to my knowledge, the Twitter account for BISC has been okay so far, but we have had some region specific Twitter accounts get banned. So the Japanese bitter Twitter account uh, was, was locked. It was basically in Twitter jail for the first like, week or two that it was up. It only had like one tweet, I think, and it was just banned. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, the project relies a lot on Twitter to get the word out. And so people were asking, well, what does it matter that the project uses Twitter? Um, you know, if it's working fine, why, why do you need censorship resistance? Um, you know, my concern is, okay, it's working now, but you know, what happens in the future? 
um, and who knows what happens. I think I'm getting ahead of myself, but I want to talk about uh, Novak or Rodolfo Novak's uh, Mastodon experiment. And I believe that was sparked by a prominent figure, I forget who it was, one of the prominent Twitter figures in, in the Bitcoin space getting banned. And, you know, Rodolfo was like, that's, you know, that's it. It kind of was the last straw for him. And that's what caused him to start the, uh, the Mastodon instance. So you never know what can happen. And considering how important Twitter is uh, and YouTube is to an extent for, for the project, I think it makes sense to talk about moving to more reliable platforms. But uh, there are some concerns on, on actually doing that and how effective it could possibly be. So I want to talk about that as well. But um, I guess not too many people on the call. Has anybody had an experience with, yes. So someone just put in the chat, secure scuttle, but I want to get to that. That's my personal favorite, um, but it's a little bit rough around the edges. I do want to talk, I want to, I want to basically stir the conversation toward, uh, toward that, um, that link that derpy bro just sent in the chat. Anyway, um, we will get to that, but for now, I wanted to ask if anybody on the call has had an experience with, I guess, with being banned on Twitter or any, any, uh, any negative experiences with, uh, with the existing social platforms. Derpy bro, you have your hand raised. Do you want to, want to say something? Okay, you're on mute. Okay. Um, okay, so you were banned on Twitter. Okay. Um, so as far as why hasn't BISC moved, I guess it's, it's a good idea to really quickly address this. In general, it's, I think, more of a matter of being pragmatic. Obviously, BISC is committed to free software and, and being as open and transparent as possible. And it would make sense for us to use more open platforms to communicate, but Contributors, as it is, already have a lot on their hands, and running infrastructure to do their jobs is, frankly, just not not too realistic, um, depending on what you're talking about. And even if we did that, I think there's a question of what are the benefits anyway? You know, people are on Twitter, they are on YouTube. If we want to be as effective as possible, as efficient as possible, it makes sense to have a presence there. And you know, establishing a presence on other platforms conceptually and theoretically is, is the way to go, but is it going to be effective is kind of what we've been dealing with. Um, of course, for things like Slack and GitHub where you kind of have to be there, like I was talking about before, it makes sense. But uh, for more of the outreach-oriented platforms, uh, it's kind of hard to create or to, to justify such a move but um, yeah, so moving on to what I think, what, I, what I'd like to really focus the discussion on. Um, what, if we did want to, you gotta start somewhere, okay? So yeah, it, it's not realistic to assume that people are just gonna leave Twitter in mass and adopt some new platform that they've never heard of before that might be a bit inconvenient, but you've gotta start somewhere. Um, what are ways, what are ways that we can do that with, without it falling flat on its face? Um, precursor to this, as I mentioned, uh, Rodolfo Novak's Mastodon experiment, the bitcoinhackers.org. I think this is a really cool case study that I'd like to talk about because in hindsight, it seems like it should have been perfect. It seems like everything was there. You had an influential leader. Uh, with great reputation, a big following of not only regular people, but also really influential people um, who, you know, who, who, who helped the, the, the trans, the, um, the, the migration, so to speak. Um, you had really good, surprising traction to begin with. So critical mass, which is usually what a lot of people, you know, think is enough. 
uh, to create traction on a new platform, you had mirroring. So you had, you know, you not only had the people who had moved over and adopted the platform, but you had, um, you know, major accounts like, you know, Zero Hedge, for example, on Twitter is a really commonly followed uh, financial Twitter account. People created bots to mirror Zero Hedge on Bitcoin hackers on the Mastodon and a few other accounts um, to reduce the fear of missing out factor from Twitter. And to top it all off, I think you had pretty nice UX. At least in my experience, the Mastodon clients that I used were pretty nice. They, you know, they looked good, they worked well. Um, and so, I don't know, it, it seemed like it should have worked. The key ingredients were there, you had critical mass, you had, you had activity, you had activity going on for a sustained period of time. Um, and you know, the guy in charge had power, had social capital to get it moving, but it didn't work. And I'm um, curious if anybody on the call has any thoughts um, of like what went wrong, what could we learn from it? Um, like, what do we take away from it? I mean, if we wanted to do something similar again, but like succeed in achieving more traction, for a longer period of time, what, I don't know, what could we do? Or like, what are, so looking at chat responses on the chat. So I don't mean to say that Mastodon failed. I think it's actually still up. I, I think I went to it a few days ago. I, oh, yeah, let's see. Oh yeah, so I'm not saying Mastodon itself has failed. Um, I was referring to the Mastodon instance, the bitcoinhackers.org, which I believe is still online. Um, when I say fail, I mean, it's just not, it's not mainstream in the Bitcoin space. People are, it seems predominantly on, on Twitter, back to Twitter, uh, as opposed to Bitcoin hackers. I mean, there were some key people in this space just like moved over and I mean, yeah, Huey, were you going to say something? Okay, sorry. Yeah. I wasn't sure that my son was working. So I think it's difficult uh, communities. So I think we should only focus on 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 moving people, moving on creating these communities for contributors who are willing to take the time to move to a new platform. For the rest, for reaching out to new people, I think we should keep using Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and stuff like that. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So stick to the established platforms for, for outreach, but experiment with a new platform for, for contributors. Yes, because I don't think most people People are willing to move to count on a new a new platform. I'm not familiar with Mastodon, but I I assume you have to to run a an instance yourself. I don't know. Yeah, well, the instance only has to be run by by one person. It's it's a federated architecture, so one person runs a server, and then uh, it's available to whoever wants to sign up to it. It's kind of like a Twitter that you can run yourself and anybody else can run their own Twitter. Um, yeah. So it's, it's not too much work on the part of the user to use it. It's more of the person who's running the server who needs to, you know, keep up with all the maintenance and the updates and all that. But then, of course, you know, it introduces other problems, which is why I'm not a big fan of it. Personally, um, the person who's in charge of the server has basically absolute control over the server. And for any community to, community to get big enough on it, uh, you're eventually going to have probably similar problems that you have to the existing platforms. Um, yeah, so Melody was saying similar thing. Test with a few people first. Yeah, 
So another thing I was thinking, um, and this, I don't know if you guys have gotten a chance to look at the, the new uh, Edward. I think it's to do it for, for the masses. What was that? OK. Um, so another thing I was thinking, uh, I was reading the Edward Snowden book uh, over the past couple of days since it came out. And he, I haven't gotten all the way through it, but he, in the first couple of chapters, talks a lot about the early internet and how it kind of regrets the way it was you know, with the, the, uh, the bulletin board systems and um, the really early internet before the companies got involved and took control of social interaction and build walled gardens and whatnot, um, where you would just go on the internet because you wanted to. You just, there, there was really nothing there, but at the same time, there was everything there. Um, nobody was thinking about UI and UX too much. Nobody was thinking too much about how is this thing going to get traction. People were just there on their own because they wanted to be there. Um, and it wasn't easy to get there in the first place. So there is kind of a built-in barrier to entry and the people who were there respected each other for being there uh, because of the inherent difficulty of doing it. And so that kind of got me thinking that maybe some of the less refined solutions out there that, you know, for example, uh, guy, uh, Derpy Bro mentioned Scuttlebutt. Scuttlebutt is a really cool technology. It's my personal favorite from a, you know, from a conceptual standpoint, but it's kind of hard to use. It's um, like local first, all your data is stored on your computer. And then um, I guess the tricky part is connecting to people who are not on your local network. Um, and so there's some hoops you have to jump through for that, setting up a pub, uh, pub server or <laughs> disk pub. Yeah, maybe. Or um, configuring Tor so that you can actually do uh, node to node uh, connections. That's not trivial either though. And, um, but I don't know, it got me thinking when I was reading the, the Snowden book that maybe that's a good thing. Maybe having a totally free platform peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, it's not even a platform, like a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, mechanism for people to connect to each other, that is not easy. Maybe the way to go at first, I don't know. Visc is maybe a good example. It's not trivial to run, at least for a normie or a normal person. Uh, you know, it's desktop software. You kind of have to, um, dispute resolution is not easy. There are some things that make it a little bit intimidating to new people, but people still use it. People who want the privacy, the security and the freedom, they're using it. Um, so maybe adopting such an approach with something like Scuttlebutt could be, uh, could be cool. We got one vote of approval for Melody. Use it. Yeah, the, I don't know. That's the issue I think with this is that, I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad you said that and I, I, would, uh, I, would hope, I would hope that people do use it. I've, I've seen, so the best Twitter account has sent out a couple of feelers for Scuttlebutt um, over the past few months, I think I've seen. And there's a lot of people who say that they would use it. And I, I'm, it's great to see that, but I, I don't know, I guess I have a slight concern that it's like, uh, and when it's actually rolled out, would they actually, but I don't know, I guess there isn't too much to do for it anyway. You're not setting up a server. Let me just try and see. So the thing about it, so people are asking about what, how rough is it? The scuttlebutt, the secure scuttlebutt in general, like I said, is like local first. It's it's meant to be a. Uh, I'm not going to use the right words here, the right terms, but essentially you're 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 doing. Every post you make, it's kind of like a blockchain at a high level, in that every post you make is 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 connected to the one before it, and it's immutable. It, it, it's signed. Um, each post is is signed 
uh, into the chain as the next item in the chain of posts that came before it. And you can, when you write content, you write it uh, in the cli whatever client you're using. Patchwork is the most common desktop. I think it's called Patchwork. Is the most yeah Patchwork is the most common desktop client. Um, you just write your posts there, um, and then whether you're online or not, it doesn't matter. It'll just like store them in your local local cache, and then when you go online, uh, it'll just sync, send your posts out to the whole network, whoever you're connected to, and uh, folks will get updates when they get them. Um, so it's if you set it up correctly, you can set it up over to work over, over Tor. You can connect to people peer to peer, to peer directly. Um, you can also have what they call pub servers, which are basically supposed to be the same as um, you know peer nodes, except that they're always up and have public IPs, so that um, whenever you write a post, whether your peers are up or not, your peer your your post will sync with the pub server, so that when your peers do come up online, they can sync with the pub server and and get the posts that they missed. Um, uh, what am I missing? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Pub servers. So the, the, the cool thing, the elegant thing about Secure Scuttlebutt is that pub servers can go up and down. Like, as I understand it, they can go up and down and the network is not really affected because all the data is stored locally. The pub servers only act as an always online um, means to mirror data from node to node. So there's no, like, there's nobody who has um, outsized power on the network. It's as close as as close to peer to peer as you can get. Um, looks like Derpy Bro posted a couple messages. Yeah, I would I would hesitate to call it a server because it's. I mean, I guess it kind of is, but. Cool. Okay. I'm just looking through the comments to make sure I haven't missed anything. Okay. Okay, yeah, so I just, uh, I guess, wanted to have a uh, discussion about this stuff. Um, it looks like Secure Scuttlebutt is, is certainly cool technology. It's the one that I would, I, would, I would like to experiment with first. So maybe we'll do that, um, at, least for the, at least for the outreach kind of social element of uh, of, of, of BISC to maybe get going toward one of these more open platforms. Maybe we'll give it, give a, give Scuttlebutt a, a try. Seems like some people are generally interested in it. Cool. All right. So, um, I guess I was, Thinking, that we could talk about that. Uh, we've talked about uh, this Keybase Riot recent uh, recent tools that went up for for communication, trader chat within the software, um, the Mastodon experiment, and Scuttlebutt. Yeah. All right, I, I don't have anything more. I, I guess it's, uh, yeah, Scuttlebutt has a few different tools. There's in the, in the chat, Turby Bro mentioned that there's a Git tool. There's a blogging tool. There's, there's a bunch of stuff. I just don't know how actively it's maintained. So I'm kind of hesitant to, uh, oh, is it active? Okay. I was under the impression that they weren't too well maintained. Okay. Cool. All right, well, I guess the only way to actually try these tools out is to actually try them out. So I think um, we'll figure out 
the best way to, to, to get started. In my mind, it's either you set up a pub server, um, like a, you know, BISC oriented, or I don't know who's going to host it, but uh, you set up a public server or you set up a, a way for people to configure uh, their peers or their nodes to, to, uh, to work over Tor. That's probably not going to be as easy. So maybe we start out with uh, pub servers. Okay, we have an offer to host. Awesome. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, I'll get, get in touch with you, uh, Tomas, about that. Okay. Um, cool. Awesome. So I think we'll do that. We'll um, maybe on Twitter. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, we'll uh, get some. Further steps, next steps on how to how to how to get Scuttlebutt running, and uh, maybe we can start moving there. All right, folks. Any any last words? Any feedback or questions or suggestions? There's a question about Weblate. Uh, for translation, uh, I have to say I'm not very involved with the translation efforts. I think um, I forget the guy's name. Uh, the translation admin is probably a better person to speak to about that. Uh, we kind of we kind of ran into the uh, the one of the issues that I mentioned before in the earlier part of the call. There, oh, Yevgeny, yeah, Yevgeny is probably the guy to talk to. Um, but it was. You know, the matter of being pragmatic, you know, is it worth moving over? Um, if it does the same thing, obviously the principles of WebLate are better than those of, of TransFX, but yeah, we'll just have to balance those priorities and see uh, what's, 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 what makes sense to do. But yeah, please uh, recommend that you reach out to Yevgeny for, for translations. Cool. So um, we will try. We'll give Scuttlebutt a try. Seems to be the conclusion. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. And maybe see you guys on Scuttlebutt. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.